And we had a question about what is the size of this underwater volcano to make it the largest? So um, I believe this, uh, this particular seamount we're exploring is uh, the largest in the entire Hawaiian archipelago at 2,446 square meters. Uh, and I think it even comes just a little bit out of the surface, which is pretty amazing. I'm not really sure how, what kind of processes led to that formation to make it so large. Um, that's a really good question though. Uh, and you can feel free to tune in at one of our um, next watches where we have some dedicated geologists on our team. And uh, you can ask them there and perhaps they can give you a little more details about the formation. But if anyone wants to chime in, feel free. We're not waking them up, so <laughs> you have to tune in to another watch. Another comment about uh, watching some Nautilus uh, videos, and thank you for sharing how much it means to you. And we have released a bunch of videos from this particular expedition, and we hope to release some more. So stay tuned for some more highlights. So far, we have the Dumbo octopus jelly, our adorable plur bank from our first dive as a watch together. So that was really amazing. Uh, so. Thanks for tuning in and um, stay stay tuned for more. Let's see if Adelanda's gonna move over there or not. Has it moved at all yet? Sorry, 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 sorry. Yeah, you're going to have to go back down the bar. I'm really 20 meters away. I'm the blue dots right now. I'm not the yellow ROV. Oh, oops. Sorry, sorry, sorry. No, all good, all good, all good. No DVL at the moment. There's a little more diversity in abundance. Yes, we're seeing um, the bamboo corals as being the dominant uh, group of octocorals, but we are we are definitely seeing different kinds of uh, bamboo corals. I would say the Keratiaceae species. Uh, some of them can be the Echinomyces or and uh, the nodal branching ones as well, the sparsely branching. Um, is that a black coral right Bamboo there? Bamboo corals, yeah, that looks like a black, black coral here. There's a hemicorallium in the corner as well. Um, Would this be too challenging of an environment to take a niskin, Dan? No. No? Okay. And there's a... Yes. Definitely take a niskin. Ramuligorgia. Is that the a blue one. one or just kind of a trick of the light? I think it's white, but it looks it blue. It looks blue in the... Yeah, that and the black coral from a distance at least looks like a staurobathes, given the branching and the bushy nature. And then you want a closer view? Yeah, that would be great if possible. Yeah, of course.
Um, push, push in there. Yeah, you can turn it down. Yes, that looks like a uh, storopathies. And can we have a quick zoom on the pink coal, which is to its right? I want, uh, if possible, if you can have a look at the polyps. The one in the background there? The pink one, the big pink one. Yeah, go ahead, push it there. That's nice. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, uh, go away. Yeah. This is uh, still a heavy coral. Yeah. Won't be getting the money up out there. Thanks, Gina. <laughs> I already did. <laughs> Just let me know if I need to turn it back up. coral down there You're too. in three beams, so I'm going to recalibrate since there's enough dots Rather. here. I think it's fine. At least closer to what it, the reality is. And none of the Niskins have been taken yet, just so you know. They're all fair game. Copy. Also, we have Elsa back here logging her first sample. Woo, first Niskin. Yeah. Awesome. All right, we'll go ahead and pause chat to uh, let our operations team focus on sampling. We're going to try and uh, snuggle the Niskins up here against the uh, wall for the sample. could slide right into that shepherd's hook shaped. And uh, multitask at a DSC of the... Oh, that's really pretty, yeah. Oh, yeah. Stay simple. Looks like that. I'm gonna zoom in there real quick while I get the uh, manipulator warmed up here. Let me know when you want me to change the camera on the Niskin. What's that? Let me know when you want me to change the camera to the Niskin. It's already on the Niskin. Is it on the... Where is number five? Oh, the it's the MacGyvered one. <laughs> talking about. <laughs> I think he 3D printed that one. Mm -hmm. Oh, the one that looks uh, like a spool. Yeah, you can. Spool. Three, two, one. Miss Pull. It went. It did go. Yep. Which number? 
six. Number six. Uh, kind of, if we start from the back, then we can um, uh, see the, uh, I can see him pop in the back first. You see that uh, camera above my screen there? Oh, yeah, yeah. And that was sample number 114. Yes, Roger. And we're at a depth of 2095. Awesome. We should just number them the other way. I don't know why I do things backwards here sometimes. Yay, I'll say, you did it. Woo! Yeah, <laughs> sampling is stressful when you're first learning, even when you're not. <laughs> There's so many moving parts. So when we're taking samples back here, we're supposed to take pictures before, during, and after. Mm -hmm. um, so for a Niskin, we'll take pictures of which Niskin we're pulling as evidence of um, the collection and also what corals are around. Um, and while we're doing that, we also have to keep a paper log of the sample, the time stamp of when it started and ended where it was taken in this in situ description. Wow. Um, and also we have to put that into sea log as well. Um, so it can be a lot. There's yeah. a lot of moving parts and easy Mind to you know. forget things. So that's why we have like a kind of redundant system oh, back here to try to right. help us remember. Yeah. Mine's a little easier. I just seem to drop a waypoint and <laughs> add a few things um, that are kind of like a, a I add more text in case something happens and you guys need to refer back to it. And then we also include things like the depth, but the waypoint is the most important part to have it on our map. Yeah, of where we collected it. Yeah, yeah. So thanks for mm -hmm. your, your help with partnering with the samples. It's yeah. yeah, definitely needed. Teamwork makes the dream work. I was just gonna say that. <laughs> <laughs> and then just to clarify, you're also recording the corals in the scene while you're collecting this Niskin, this water sample, because you want to be able to match the e-DNA, the environmental DNA, to what's in the water, right? Yes, yeah, and see if there's potentially, yeah, yeah, if it's matching what, what we're seeing, and then if there's any other readings of other right. species like better, that we can't see. Better form our e-DNA, like library, and um, confirm what we're seeing. Yeah, this is, yeah, definitely a good spot for a first Niskin, since we haven't really seen much diversity or density in Okay, we seem to see both. Mm -hmm. For this dive, that is. And the 114 means we've taken 114 samples this cruise. Does it start at 001? It does, yeah. yeah. So um, most of those have been geological samples and Niskins. And then I think the least amount would be the bio. I haven't done my official tally yet of what's what and what we've collected. But um, definitely in comparison to my last cruise last year, we've been way more conservative with our sampling. Um, because we want to honor the sacred place of Papa Hanau, Makuakea, um, where all these samples are ancient and sacred. Um, so that's something we want to continue practicing and improving upon as we move forward, um, even outside of this monument. Yeah. I thought it was just because you had too many geologists. <laughs> <laughs> nah. N not enough. We don't even have one on our watch. Yeah. <laughs> I guess Hans is our... Or, nope. let me rephrase that, not <laughs> enough biologists. We actually had two and a half, because Mike calls himself a half. Yeah. And they right. still had more <laughs> on their watch. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Wow, um, these are some big fans. It's interesting yeah. how the yellow is just uh, yes, in the so middle of the is a common dumb bad. So it looks like that is a big Pampacoro fan. I think it's a keratoisis, but the yellow is part of the skeleton that is overgrown by hydroids. Mm. So that's why it looks so startlingly different wow. from the other branches. Or it is like 
a colony, a dead colony in front of the one that we are seeing, but it is definitely overgrown by uh, hydras, and I think I can see a small squat lobster on it. Come Ooh. down just a couple meters. Well. And yes, yeah, lovely curatoi. Like these are internodal bamboo coral fans, most probably keratoises, but I would stop at internodal bamboo corals. I believe that would be our first squat lobster. Yeah. Of the day. Oh wow! Yeah. It will be. Touching with my tail, I'm gonna come back around. It. Do you want a closer shot of the yellow bits? Uh, or are you happy there? We can continue moving. All right. Are the hydroids pretty like aggressive? Like they land on the coral and then overgrow it, or is it like the coral died I in that part and then yeah. the hydroids took that yes. place over? Yes, I think they grow on, uh, they overgrow on uh, dead skeletons. Okay, they so come, ready. They come okay. in, yeah, and kill them and stop like that. And we have another question asking, um, how many species of coral do you usually see at this depth? So, um, I know you've you've had also experience on the Okeanos, right, Pashana? Um, what is like the high end and the low end of coral diversity that you've seen through those dives, if you're able to comment? Yeah, you know, it, it varies largely on where the exploration is happening, right? Uh, honestly, I've not, I don't have a number in mind because I haven't counted consciously uh, but uh, what we are seeing right now uh, I mean I've definitely seen and we have also on this expedition seen sea mounds or parts of sea mounds with much higher diversity uh, so uh, there's a range like we're um, good for it 20 three, one, five. So this would be 20 somewhere three, like one on the five. lower middle That's side, close. middle end of that range. And then you have the higher ones. Mm. It depends. And also the kind of habitat, where the seamount is located, what part of it, what face of it. Uh, and then you can have stretches where you rarely see anything. Right, like those that area where we would see the corals only on the underside exactly. of the yeah. really large boulders. Yes. So that was so interesting, Yes. the distribution. And there's another very beautiful Iridogorgia. Was most probably our first. I think we did see a smaller one at the start. But a uh, uh, full fire work status Iridogorgia, this will be the first one. Yeah, I've been struck by how different the seamounts have been, particularly yes. when we first yeah. started up Absolutely. north. Absolutely. And, and you're right, we're on a particular ridge and a, with a particular orientation to the prevailing currents or perhaps the general currents yes. at a particular depth. Absolutely. The depth, currents, angles and parts of the seamounts, the structure and the geology of the seamount, the overall, like, overall structure uh, will determine how the current flows around it. And we have seen the differences also. And, uh, and depends from ocean to ocean, parts of the ocean. So it's a multitude of factors. Yeah, it's been great to see the different, um, like that pink forest in the beginning, oh, yeah. so beautiful, and then the sponge land. The we just passed over a, a tiny fish. I don't know if it was a rat tail or something. Oh, sorry, I, I missed it. There's a bamboo coral web and another one of those Ramudicogias back. Is that a tetraplura? Is that the first dead tetraplura we're seeing or is that also a frayed? Laying next to the bamboo. Oh. I didn't That's know. I can't see probably the pattern. Also, yeah. yeah. Looks more frayed given the side ones, at least in this pile. I don't know about that. But this looks like the... Let's see. Where is the pleurogorgia? pictures hi yeah. 
I was talking about that, like, laying the horizontal yeah. sponge there, but it's probably the same we've been seeing. Okay, I can uh, maybe come up just a bit. Oh, yeah, no, the Wait, the, the white living one is, yeah. yeah, that's the Ramulogorgia metallic. Met Metallurus. Yeah, oh, how is a Pleurogorgia and oh, a Ramulogorgia different? Oh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, I don't know. I'm going to have to, that's my new study yeah. uh, topic for the night, like Paragorgias <laughs> and Hemicralians. Uh, because, uh, r wait. I didn't even realize they have the same. Ramulogorgia um, is where? Is, is it a Paragorgia? Uh, no, it's also a Chrysogorgia. It's also a Chrysogorgia, right? Yeah. But uh, I'm not seeing it here. Because they have... I think Asako was um, suggesting that ID earlier yeah. in the chat. So I think we found Let's this photo see. from Googling her recommendation. Is it the same genus that has been... Because it says, like, Chrysogorgia. Let's check what has happened with these. Ramulicorgia. Uh, I think we're good for another twenty. Three one five. I hope. I hope. Yeah. Concern viewer just chiming in on the rice topic again. They're saying it always rinse your rice because it helps remove arsenic and other heavy yes, metals. Yes. So thank I you for your concern. Agree. How and, is this um, stuff ending I up in our rice? I don't. Wow. I think there's some. Sometimes plants will concentrate certain yes. metals, right? Yeah. So maybe that's a thing too. But wow. Thanks for your concern and warning, okay. team uh, non rice. I think yeah. I missed this conversation when I was. <laughs> dealing with something else. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've read about that too. Yeah. There's a certain percentage of arsenic that can be washed out. Wow, okay. Yeah, I'll be washing mm -hmm. my rice mm -hmm. now. <laughs> what I'm was the other one uh, that we were looking at? Uh, uh, you had the tap open. Yeah. I'm not uh, sure. Pleurogorgia. Yes. So yeah, Sako, how do we tell the difference between yeah. Pleurogorgia and Ramulogorgia? The difference to the the branching and Chrysogorgia has zigzag stem and branching. Yes. I can ask her. Chrysogorgia. Good for five there. Oh, okay. Pleurogorgia is unaccepted. The accepted name is Ramulogorgia. So the same. Let's just check at what a level that has happened. Uh, okay, the genus Pleurogorgia is accepted. But Pleurogorgia militaris is uh not accepted yes pleurogorgia militaris is ramuligorgia militaris and but what is the difference between the two genera let me ask and for reference upashana and taylor ann are looking at a database called worms which stands for World Register of Marine Species. So they have a very detailed taxonomic information if you ever want Good to learn more. Another 20. 
And special thanks to our team of scientists on shore that are also helping us uh, with all of their knowledge and input on what we're seeing and trying to identify. Some more living frayed sponges with, I think, another black coral. Yes, another banty banty. It's also beautiful uh, aspidoscopial. Yes, I think yes. that is how you pronounce it. I haven't tried to say it out loud yet. <laughs> Wait. I don't know how if that is pronounced. I just aspidoscopial. Yes. Yeah, that's, that's how I have been doing. That it. sounds right to me. Sounds great. <laughs> is, that a, is that a teeny, teeny, tiny purple? Yes, sea cucumber yeah. on the sea floor. Oh, it's so small. It's so tiny. Moon baby, sea cucumber. <laughs> you're expanding. You're like next level now, Mia. Like <laughs> yeah, she's like sea stars and all, all kinds kind of, of dirt. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Need to get that LASIK, like. Like you, Mia. Yeah. Do <laughs> <laughs> you think that's a staropathies or uh Oh, it looks bushy. Oh, there's What's a sea the star up there, too. Do you want a yes. closer look at the black coral? Yes, please. Thank you. Right there. The need of the polar bear, the line is so... Yeah. That makes sense, right? Chrysogorgia denotes to write down. And these are the same sponges that we said look like rib cages and spines yes. earlier, right? Yeah. So cool. It's such an interesting shape. Yeah, I think they're my favorite sponges that I've seen. They're big. Uh, you can push in on the black coral there. Can't quite get that close. The Sometimes when they're away. zooming in, I also go like this. I said, that's good to me. <laughs> <laughs> I think this looks more I like also turn my head parties. as if I can get more yeah, angles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I just did that and then I'm like, okay. Jane is uh, zooming in. I'm like, if I can get closer to the screen, I'll zoom in. Maybe an alternative path is. The black coral. Um, still, I think deciding. Yeah. Yeah. Tr it couldn't be. I, Looks I, like. Trisopathies? Uh, no, stigopathies. No, no, no. I'm just naming all the black corals now. Wait, wait. <laughs> I think it looks like one of the alternopathies, which which kind of looks like a batipathies with branches. Oh, okay. Uh, sorry, or uh, <laughs> or pyrantipathies. Oh, uh, yes, pathies. yes. Alter, not alter. I think okay. I need to like, yes, thank you so much. Alright, put this in like text. a word document or something so that it's uh, grouped taxonomically and not flip through notebooks and not remember the. Yeah. Oh wow, there's a huge one. Oh, oh yeah. That is huge. Wow. I was thinking that those were smaller. Like those were large. Uh, yeah, uh, that is a big one. Amazing how like bright white they are too yeah. when they're living. Uh, look down just a bit for me. Looks like we're on the top of a ridge here. Yeah, the contours see are. The, you can see the particles pick up and all the yeah. sponges in the background there. And add yeah, to definitely oh, an increase of life yeah. on the top of this ridge. Yep. Interesting. And we have a little under an hour left on our watch. And this will be our last uh, 12 to 4 a.m. watch for this group and for this uh, expedition. Yeah, we might have another daytime watch. I'm not yes. sure. Yeah, right. the last 12 yeah. to 4 a.m. watch, not our last watch. Hopefully. Yeah, we might uh, dive on recovery, yes. right? Yeah. Yes. That's what or I mean, be on watch idea. on recovery. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, there's a tetrapleura over there, I think, with the crinoid on top. Oh, oh yeah, that can be a tetrapleura. That's a very side. odd shape. And also from this angle, it looks so different, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Wow. I love the kyanite sitting on top of the sponge. I wonder if these are the sponges they call satellite sponges. It kind of looks like a satellite dish. Can be. I don't know which ones are called, but these can be easily called. Or a megaphone. Yeah. Oh, yeah, there's those gramophone sponges from the other oh, dive, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, look, down, look down a bit for me. Recalibrate. Just kind of run across the uh, ridge here. Related to operations right now, um, you were asking about uh, a second ROV. So we do use a dual body system. Uh, basically, we have a smaller ROV Atalanta above our larger ROV Hercules, and that provides us an eye in the sky to see what, or I don't know, not, not in the sky, eye above Hercules to see what Hercules is doing. If you want to see a graphic of this, we have it on our website. And you can learn more about uh, this dual body system of ROVs. And typically, we run the ROVs for 24-hour dives. Um, and that's limited by factors like. Come up a bit more for me. Um, people getting tired, how much space we have for samples, um, maintenance that needs to be done on the ROV. Um, there's potential weather concerns as well. So all those factors are concerned for, um, are taken into con uh, consideration for the length of a dive. Yeah, so we're headed to waypoint six now, and it should be less steep. Okay. So we've already talked about, we see more stuff here. Let's go poke around on the ridge top here for a minute. Yeah, we're about 250 meters away. I mean, you're going in the, like, in the straight towards the waypoint, so. You can poke around. The waypoint to the north there? Yeah, so we're going to go here, the waypoint six, and then they go kind of southwest. Yeah, we might cut the corner there. Yeah. We cut the corner around five, but yeah. Whatever you want to get close-ish close, close -ish to here, and then the next watch will go southwest. Yeah, I have a feeling they'll come up and turn left and keep going uphill, but who knows. Is it? Is it? Oh, Is that's it? yes. Oh, <laughs> polyopagon, my yes. old friend. Yes, <laughs> A fast polyopagon, then oh. the sponges, and I thought it was an octopus or something. Oh. <laughs> Can we have a look at this also? Sure. If possible. Yeah, let me back out a little and see where if I can get in there. If 
we've got an interesting symphony of sponges here as well. Yeah. So is that a black coral? Yes. I'm learning. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. I think it's the same one. Uh, that we, okay. similar to the one that Push we saw here. previously. Hmm. Sorry. Yeah. And a small oh. hemicorallium. And there's a squat lobster. Oh. Probably a minidopsis. Two squat oh, lobsters. Yeah. Two, two pink plural, ones. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you so much. Thank okay. You. All right. And Tibet, please. Yeah, I thought those were maybe that pink coral there, but yeah. Two squat lobsters. Come up just a few meters. Let me come around yeah. this. Tombstone here. Or just put this black or <coughs> antibiotic. I think it's about antibiotic. Uh, I'm just going to back off here for a minute and look to see if I can get in there. I keep hitting the caps lock on the thing and I, I don't want to be screaming. <laughs> Are you angry when you're typing there? Yes. Tuck, 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 tuck. Very angry. And we had a question about sponges. Um, can they turn if the current changes? So um, sponges no. don't really have any kind of muscles or anything like that so once they grow they that's the shape they're in and they can add more tissue and maybe like change their shape a little bit but they can't really just turn um, if the current changes so this how, current yeah. yeah go ahead how many different sponges do you see right now uh, one two three uh, Three, I see three. There's, there's small ferrets uh, in the background, like in front of that aspidus, small aspidus cupula over there. There's a ferret. It's the same family, but I think I'm seeing three. And these are all glass sponges? All glass sponges. Yes, there's two of those. Tell which way the wind's blowing. Eh? So I guess it would mean the current is kind of stable here because they take a while to grow, right? Or. Mm -hmm. Any thoughts on that? And then they're all facing that same direction. Do we yeah. know more about like underwater currents and how often they might change direction? Or they don't generally change. Direction. They don't generally change. Because they're not affected by wind. Sometimes right. depending on the depth of uh, how the current, the sh each layer affects the next layer, right? It's kind of right. and spiral. So depending on the depth, uh, because the deep sea is basically 200 to the sea floor, mm -hmm. so it can affect in the uh, uh, shallower depths of the deep sea, but not probably at the depth that we currently are. Yeah, okay. I was gonna ask um, or bring up the fact that like, couldn't climate change be a, something that changes the deep sea currents because of the temperatures of the water yeah. changing? Yeah. Um, so uh, the 
or just the water itself, the temperature of the yeah, water itself the moving around. The temperature of the water can change. Uh, however, at such depths, there are predictions that it will not change so much. As so far, there haven't. But definitely in the shallower de depths yeah. of the deep sea, yes. But yes, during the bigger climatic cycles, the uh, glaciation, deglaciation, they change uh, somewhat, but not Let's so try much. a 330, so we'll... Sure. I'll uh, go along the slope here for a while. I'll also get you towards your waypoint. And all, what can change is the concentration of nutrients, given the fresh, how much of the water yeah, ice for the northern changes. Uh, you can come down a few meters now. Let's see what's uh, stretched out a bit here. And we had a question about water chemistry in the deep ocean and asking what elements are present. So in seawater in gen general, you'll have things just different kinds of salts like um, sodium, chloride, potassium, magnesium, um, sulfates, and you'll have different kinds of organic matter as well. Um, so carbon-based things. Uh, and then for particular environments like uh, hydrothermal vents, um, black smokers, the one that spew, it looks like a column of black smoke in the water, they'll have things like deposits of iron sulfide um, and then white smokers will have things like barium, mm. calcium, sil and silicon. Come down a few more meters for me. Got an interesting sonar shot there. And another question, what kind of fish reside at this depth? So we don't have shallow water fish that um, a lot of people may be familiar with, like clownfish, but um, we do have things like rat tails, cusk eels, lantern sharks, um, archonocops fish, or I think they're called like sea toads. Um, so definitely check those out because they have some really interesting shapes. Copper eels. There are lots of uh, fun looking fishes. Yeah. We have the angler fish. Majority of the fishes that we see can be grouped under uh, either the angler fishes, the uh, eels, the synaphobranchid eels, and alike, the eel like fishes. Uh, then uh, we have the grenadiers and the macro urids. Uh, and then we have the tripod fishes, the hypnopidae, mm. perch-like fishes. Uh, yeah. Yes, please. It was a small it was a gorge. Those are lovely, mm -hmm. but um, there are no polyopagons. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I have found a new... 
I think that garden, admiration for that, that garden we saw the other no, was absolutely. was really absolutely. quite spectacular. Yeah. The still cam photos from that were beautiful yeah. too. <laughs> absolutely. Mm. So I have a question about the, you guys are just talking about fish. I feel like a lot of times when people think about deep sea fish now, they think of the one that has the, you know, kind of like the yeah, lens. Yeah. Yeah. But I've never seen, have you guys ever seen one on a Nautilus dive? They are not really found. Those specific ones for which we see the drawings and the illustrations, they are more found in the water column, if I'm not wrong. Uh, uh, but the ones that we see, the frog fish, we haven't seen the true frog fishes or the toad fishes. They have that uh, sensory organs. It's like basically. And uh, they are all related. You, can, you will see fishes with that sensory organ, uh, but not exactly the ones that we see the common, illust common illustrations of. And another fun fact for you, Mia, um, many anglerfishes, because they're swimming around in the um, deep and open waters, they don't stumble upon a mate that frequently. So oh, yeah. a lot of times the male becomes parasitic and actually just like chomps onto the female. Yeah. And they're and like then, tiny. Yeah, they're super I tiny. I just read that in that book I'm reading. Oh, the creepy book. Oh, the star, creepy book. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. I was surprised at how like fitting it was to what we were doing. Though. Yeah. <laughs> the description of that book. Yep. So the male becomes parasitic so and yeah. chops onto the female. And yeah. they're small. They're tiny. No comment. <laughs> Doesn't sound too different, right? No comment. <laughs> And same thing, I think this, you know, finding a mate is hard in the deep ocean. So with the bone eating worms that we were just uh, talking about in our watch earlier, the the red plumes, so like the female worms have these like red looking gills. There's actually microscopic parasitic males that live inside those gills. So oh, wow. yeah, kind of crazy. Yeah. Reproduction in the deep sea is, is weird. What is that yellow, like almost perfectly round? Sorry? Oh, never mind. I think it's just like an old base of a something. Oh, okay. It just looked really bright. I love these panoramic spins around the sponges. Yeah. It's really they're nice. beautiful. Yeah, they're, they're so know, deep. Thanks. Yeah, and what's interesting is that all the aspidus copula that we have been seeing before, not all of them had this extended hollow structure. They were quite planar. Oh. Yeah. So I am not sure if this is a different genus or this is a morphotype or a, just a, a variation in the morphology because of the geophysical situation uh, conditions here but this is quite different from the general uh, planar as aspidoscopula that we have been seeing was that the elephant ear or no what's no. The, the rib cage the rib cage okay thank you for the comment <laughs> <laughs> yeah because it's very smooth yeah. on the bottom inside and a bit ridgy on the top Look down a bit oh, to the right.
And in the still cam, it looks like a piece of art, like a, mm -hmm. some kind of sculpture. Just missed it, I still can't. Wow, that's gorgeous. It's wild. It is. It definitely. Let's see if I can bring it to the right just a little there, Hans, for one more. massive yeah that's better Ooh. i just want to crawl inside and take a nap <laughs> exactly <laughs> that looks so comfortable i wonder if that's what the little shrimp think when they're swimming <laughs> around in the deep ocean they're like oh that's a good sponge time to take a nap Your heading? Oh, you were watching me. Roger. You're, you want me to go back? Uh, yes, please. 330? Yeah. Roger. Using your sonar. Okay, I'm going to take a nap. Okay. I wanted to look inside one of those sponges, but I finally got a spot where I could come around without. Sorry. Can you uh, pan the nav screen a little for yep. us? Oh. And we had some questions about the age of these sponges, so it's hard to say for certain, but um, just looking up some other research that's been done, um, some other scientists found an Antarctic deep sea sponge uh, at about 440 years and another deep sea um, sponge to be over 200. Um, so many of these sponges could be very, very, very old. Oh, yes, definitely hundreds of years old. Yeah. and then asking about our next dive. So this is the final dive of our um, Ala Almoana Kayuli expedition, but there are more expeditions as part of this 2023 season um, through December. So if you'd like to check out some of these other dives um, that will be coming up and they'll be using some different technology, doing some mapping, so oh, yeah. should be pretty, <laughs> should be pretty interesting. <laughs> Do you want to share more about um, that day? Uh, yeah, well, the short story is we have some uh, really fantastic um, cameras to put on Hercules. We have a cinema camera Ooh. and a couple stereo cameras, so we should be able to get some really awesome uh, photogrammetry and uh, the cinema camera will probably be down low on the porch where the uh, stills camera is, so it'll be more like you're walking through the park instead of mm -hmm. looking at it from above, kind of how we do with the uh, Zeus oh, camera. Oh, that's interesting. Wow, that sounds uh, super cool. Yeah. Uh, the camera will be definitely more exposed, but uh, the less seawater you have to look through, to look at something and 
Uh, the closer you can get the camera to whatever you're looking at. You get some, yeah, sorry. Some just uh, really fantastic images. You see once in a while where the opportunity presents itself where we're able to get the Zeus camera close to what we're looking at. But not all the time because it's kind of inside the vehicle. So we got to sometimes if, you know, a coral or a rock is sticking out, we can get closer to it. But with them, with all three of those cameras down on the porch, it's going to be, I think, pretty awesome images. Ooh, there's a mm, something. A fish. <laughs> <laughs> I just saw the movement. Uh, We're still on the kind of derm level, not quite. <laughs> the ooh-ah uh, factor is going to be. Yeah. If, if we're on any kind of, I, I'm not sure what we're going to look at. I'm, I'm not it's sure if we're looking at uh, archaeology or. <laughs> it's not a tail. Right. It. We need to move the ship. That's what's happening. We're lagging. To another move? I forgot move? all about it. <laughs> we were just, uh, thinking about cameras, camera break. Oh, we just did a move though. We just finished. Oh, we did. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Yeah, we're good. So I can so put another one in though. Yeah, I can't. Sorry, I can't multitask. It's an orphan deformis. I lose the plot. I think so. Or a gadiform, definitely. Orphan deformis, yes. Plot. Yeah. Uh, let me. So for the day, but for the fun. Well, wait, I got. I'm pulling Jacob around here, so I can't. i completely lost the plot there. Of course, that happens right when the boss walks in. <laughs> boss lady. Um. How about if you move what? Atlanta towards yeah, Hercules? That will help me out. No, not you. Oh. Me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, That's turn off auto editing. Yeah. <laughs> that would be west. <laughs> yeah, how about 285? 285. 20 meters, 285. Oh, wait, no. This is a for Rankin. Just a little bit there. Yeah. That's a snap of Rankin E, definitely. Wow. Oh. Okay, give a good chip. I love the way it's moving so slowly and just gracefully through the water. So cool. Yeah. Oh okay, yeah, it's one of the bigger fish we've seen. Is yeah. there a common name for this fish, Vashna? Do you do we know? <laughs> I know you hate common names, but I don't hate common <laughs> <laughs> it's probably a very strong word. I would say maybe a cutthroat. Uh, it looks like not, it's an Afro blanket, so probably <laughs> cut throat. I'll just write Snappo blanket. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I'm gonna I'm gonna run down the hill here a little to get back in. Get back in the box. Back in the box. Okay. You drink you don't They would make continuously make uh, spelling mistakes. I'm gonna just distract you a little bit more, Dan. Do you know what type of cinema camera it is? What's that? Do you know what type of cinema camera it is? Uh, yeah, it's a. Uh A Z Cam uh, Pro, um, oh, what's the model? It's uh, Z Cam's latest and greatest. It's so new that uh, 
the firmware yeah. that they have for it is not even the out yet. The VIP in the front <laughs> is definitely a bamboo coral whip. The one at the back is also a bamboo coral whip, but looks like a bamboo coral from here. But this is a tall one. It's kind of making a curve. Like a shepherd's hook. Yep. <laughs> I didn't want to say it since it was yes. so confusing last yes. time. You know, now I know what you were talking about. It no, took it me a little bit to remember how shepherds It gives us insight like. into your life. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and there's also something a reddish on the seafloor. Maybe yeah, yeah. I'm... Pull up, zoom there. Oh. Here? Yeah. Is that right? what you say, There's something there. tiny and red. Pause Maybe a shrimp. Or something. I was again trying to go towards the screen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yes, this is a beautiful bamboo coral web for sure. And we see that all the polyps are closed up right now. Uh, and you can also see the sclerites in the tissue. The needle-like uh, oh calcium yeah, carbonate I remember structures. You were about those, yeah, yeah. Which wow. are it gives it strength. Yes, it forms the base of the uh, tissue. It's a it's part of the structure, uh, structural material, and um, sclerites are only present in the octocorals and not in any other group of cnidarians or anthozoans. So the uh, scleractinian corals, the hard corals, they don't have the sclerites. It's only present in the octocorals. Thank you so much. Uh, will it be possible to have a quick zoom on the pl uh, branched colony, which is at the uh, the one behind? Behind, yeah. Yep. Behind this one. Thank you. What a nice zoom. Yeah. Amazing. Go ahead, Jenny. I'll have to focus in the background there, I think. Oh, that one. It, that looks like... That... Is that a nodal branching or an internodal branch? Nodal. I think nodal. 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 Yeah. Yes, nodal. Good. So <laughs> <that is>. Good. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Thankfully. Yeah. No, because that means it's a different kind from the ones that we've ever <laughs> Yes, yes, okay, enough yeah. with the internodal. <laughs> We're sick of it. it. We're yeah. done with them. <laughs> so this would probably be the Jesonisis genius. That's nice. Thank you so much. Okay, you can go ahead. Did you figure out what that red thing was? No. Uh, shrimp, maybe? Probably a shrimp of the sea flow. Let's uh, do 2315, please. 20... Three one five. Any need to go, Joe? Hmm. At our lab, you know, we have a red, a red digital camera. The like the surf film kind of ones. Yeah, lucky you. Oh, so it is. So, <laughs> so there's the another camera. fish there. We've yeah. been deciding oh, them this whole time. Do you like when we ooh and ah, or does that annoy you? Um, Are you talking to me? I'm talking to you. Yeah. Is Megan still hovering with that camera? Is she, wait, is she still here? <laughs> you're trying oh. to get me to say. You're trying to get me to incriminate myself. I didn't myself. know she was there. <laughs> I love it when you ooh and ah. <laughs> She's like right out of my line of sight. I don't like that. <laughs> That's what it's the like shepherd hook is for. Well. Yeah. <laughs> so that uh, <laughs> big glass sponge, uh, which looked like uh, it was extending and um, kind of creating a cave. <laughs> so that's finally in, in front of the camera. So uh, Asako gave us a suggested new ID for it. Uh, looks like it is in the genus you sorry in the family you read today. You hard, you know. uh, probably the genus Lefroela. <laughs> Oh, 
on a coral on a sponge? Mm -hmm. Crinoid. It's a Crin coral on a sponge. Oh, oh, no. <laughs> I know that Did much. You say <laughs> <it's a> crinoid. <laughs> I don't know why. It's, it's going to jump? It's going to oh. flip. But there is something. There is something. Yeah. Well, but there probably is a, a is little star. Of heroin? <laughs> yeah. If it oh, was I a know. crinoid, I'd be like... Wait, is the coral actually settled on top of that? I can't... I think... I don't know. We have to that turn sponge? and see. But there's one of those uh, uh, oh. magnificent alien sponges, the Advena Magnifica. Uh, come down by a place. Come down by it. Wow, It yeah. looks like a sea star. Yeah, very skinny. Yep. And the coral has somehow uh, settled on the sponge. Yeah, that's interesting. Down very by. interesting. I don't know if I've seen that before. No, I don't recall seeing. It like makes sponges. me think. Oh, well, that's a good shot. Yes, uh, okay. Yeah, that is a good shot. Wow. And then this, the <laughs> brittle star just poking over. I know. <laughs> yeah, it shows like how how much harder that material of the sponge looks like it must be in exactly. order for the coral to. Um, the sponge is not alive. Settle still? on it. The sponge is not alive. No. Sponge isn't alive. Do live sponges have a way of, you know, keeping things off of them? Yes. When they... Yes. Yeah. Yes. All of these, the corals, the sponges, they have biochemical compounds which act as, which have defense mechanisms. Unless you're a male parasite that just gloms on. <laughs> I remember. <laughs> Females rule the deep sea. Mm. Is this the alien sponge? Mm -hmm. Yeah. The magni the magnificent alien. The visiting magnificent alien. The visiting is though I should point out, not part of the scientific name. Oh, okay. But how they came up with the name that had the story. That the words that they have used means a visiting member. Uh. A visiting alien. I think Advina is a visiting alien, and Magnifica is magnificent. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I was just... Such scientific discussion. Never mind, just making noises. And we had a comment about how some of the tiny organisms organisms we've been seeing are able to swim so fast through the water. So yeah, there's a totally a whole science to how organisms move in the water. There's been um, robotics um, that are based on how polychaetes, how worms undulate in the water. There's um, equations like the Reynolds equation for understanding how plankton move in the water and the vis how the viscosity affects them. So definitely a lot of interesting questions about how they are able to move so quickly through the water. Okay, me, we're good for the 20 now. 315. Roger. 315. Yeah. Pressing on towards... At some point, we're going to hang a left turn. We can carry on till the end of our watch, and then they can work out where they want to go. Mia, are we between five and six? Uh, we yeah, are. Good. We passed five. We're pretty close. Uh, we're relatively close to six. Gotcha. Well. I guess still a couple hundred meters, but... Uh, the way the uh, local bathy is going, uh, this kind of 315-ish is taking us up the hill. Mm -hmm. 
So I'm expecting at some point it to, based on the, uh, based on Mia's map there, to get steeper to our left. But so far I have not seen that. So yeah, we're so good. Yeah. Should take us yeah. through the end of our watch here, and then. Yeah, we made good progress. Yeah, we're about 150 meters, but yeah, we made it. I think we made more progress than what was expected because there's only <laughs> not because our watch tends to stop. <laughs> and look at a lot of stuff. <laughs> I know you were all thinking it, but uh, yeah, there's only eight waypoints, but number eight is far yeah. away. It's pretty. F spaced it's uh the spacing is oh, yeah. much larger they have some downhill action there yeah too. there's some downhill <laughs> uphill <laughs> make, that could be us at the next the end of the dive i just go backwards okay and zoom in on the uh, black coral there possible black coral i was hoping we'd see another octopus Muted. Uh, yeah, that that looks like a uh, Starobates. Same one. No, we didn't see this before. I think we did earlier. Oh yes, we did. Right. Yeah, or we saw the, one. I need to learn the difference between the Leopathies, which is the newer species of black mm. coral found in, in this monument. I know Danielle brought up the fact that we might have seen it earlier, and I, we collected. A portion of it, but I think we also thought it was Staropathies. So yeah, yeah, that's another one I need to learn the differences between. Yeah, yeah. I think the I branching is different. Yeah. DSC shot too, if you want it. Oh yeah, it's pretty. Dan, I think you missed it when we were getting okay. ready. I could go in, Just we were in the mess. We saw the the watch before us saw an uh, octopus. One of those more. I don't. What Casper. So that would be the Ramioli Gorgia militaris. So what I learned from Asakur, so what we learned from Asakur is the genus Ramiolo Gorgia has just one species in it, which mm. is this one, the Ramiolo Gorgia militaris. This was previously in the genus Plurogorgia. So now it I is, see. there's a Ratipathis. Uh, the Plurogorgia militaris has been moved into a new genus, the Ramuligorgia uh, militaris. We passed it. Sorry, it was the white one, the branching with the sub branches coming out with the polyps. Good thing nobody can see me. It's paused in between, remember, nobody can see me. I can't. Potentially, there are cameras. And I've started ignoring. <laughs> <laughs> I can be like, oh, that wasn't me. Why do some bamboo corals curl like that and others don't? Are they different? Yes, they're different okay. kinds. Okay. Mia, are you able to take a quick question? Uh, depends what the question is. Um, we had a viewer extremely confused about what we said earlier about a creepy book, a creepy deep sea <laughs> book. Um, if you want to just share a little bit more about um, this book and um, whether you would recommend it or not, that well, might il illuminate I don't the situation. Wanna I don't want to say what it is now that it was described as creepy and offend the author. It's just, <laughs> a, just a book that I'm reading. Uh, spooky. <laughs> it's spooky. spooky. It's spooky. Yeah. Spooky. Um, yeah, it's a spooky book. Uh, it's about the deep sea and people working in like a really deep sea, like 3,000 meters, like, I don't know, science. It's um, science fiction. Yeah, it's science fiction. But then they, they describe some stuff as, you know, like they were injected with rat tail DNA and they mentioned the gulper eel and that uh, 
the uh, yeah, you might as well say the name of the book, man. It's called uh, <laughs> something starfish. Starfish, yeah. yeah. It's just called starfish. It's just called starfish. Yeah. I think it's just called starfish. Oh, I wow. don't. Oh, know okay. that's why I picked it out for me and yeah. I gave her gave it to her as a present. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So that would be a star of Yes. Yeah. And here we have a bamboo oh, coral. Different bed individual. And, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Do you want a closer look, or are you good? Yes, please, on uh, this one. Oh, I'm so sorry. Right. Uh, on this one, if possible. Uh, sorry, the one to the right? The one to the right, okay. the branching one. And also, if possible, at, the, at, a, at any one of the points of branching to note if the it's... The one uh, with the polyps on it. And just to finish that last thought, yeah, yeah, it was a book in our library, and because I've been saying starfish. It was for you. It was for yes. me. So. There was no starfish on the cover, though. The no. book chose you. You didn't choose the book. And no mention of starfish in the book yet, right? Oh, no, it has. Oh, it did mention okay. starfish? You Great. Can push in there, please. Oh. You want to see the branches? No. Yeah, the point of branching, again, to determine if it is a nodal or an internodal branching. Yeah, I can't quite tell from this. I can't can quite we, tell Can from we tip this. up a little bit, pan up a little bit? I think it's there internodal. A right it's there, like looks yeah. internodal. Internodal, internodal. Internodal. Can you explain what that is? Yes. So you see the bamboo coral stalk. Uh, here we have the darker parts, so which are called the nodes, like, um, and the white parts are called the internodes. So one of the... Uh, morphological characters used in classifying bamboo corals is to see where the branches come from. Do they come out from the nodes, which would be the darker bands, uh, or from one of the in between. in between white parts? So the bamboo corals have a mixture of calcium carbonate and proteinaceous skeleton. So the dark are the proteinaceous parts and the white are the calcium carbonate part. So it's, a, it's one of the major uh, morphological traits that's used in identifying and grouping the uh, bamboo corals. So yeah. that's why uh, I'm noting down whether it's a nodal or an internodal branching. Okay. Um, proteinaceous. Proteinaceous yeah. refers to protein-based. Yeah, because it's just not pure. It's a kind of protein mixed with other right. with compounds. other organic. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Other organic compounds. And the calcium carbonate is also not, not just purely calcium carbonate. There's some magnesium in it. And, We're good for uh, another 20. Minutes. So if there's a nice hand to master. If I'm not very wrong. Yeah, let's do 315 one more, one more time. How the structure is basically that you have a continuous protein uh, skeleton inside. Parts of it is covered by calcium carbonate on the outside. And where you have the breaks in calcium carbonate, that's when the internal protein uh, comes forth and you can see it. Right. So if I'm yeah, not very wrong candelabra. about this. That's our first I4 clade, Yeah, clade, right? I4 clade. The first one on this dive, at least our watch. And there's a nice uh, ophiroid clinging from, clinging on one of the branches. Yeah, I don't think I've seen the candelabra, as we said. Yeah, yeah. Not on this dive. Previously this we dive, have. Yeah. Previously we have. It's soon going to have its own genus. The papers are, the are being written. Yes. Are the candelabras always nodal? Uh, Keratoisis. I think they're internodal. This Let one looks check. like it's node, or the branches are at it's the like node. It's close to the node, but not. Uh, okay. Mm, let me check. Do you want a close up of its branch? Uh, yes, that would be really great. Here. Thank Set you. It down here so we can zoom in.
There it goes. Hans, Mr. Yes. Yeah. We haven't <laughs> seen many of them. No, we haven't. The... We definitely haven't. Pure recreation. <laughs> yeah, these are nodal branching. Clearly, yes. So these are, you were right, uh, they are always nodal branching. Keratoisidine, I forklade. This has the nodal branch. So when you, and also when we say planar, meaning it's only on one side, this yeah. is what it means, yeah. that it's it's not on the side facing us, but the polyps are on the, the so, opposite side? Uh, so the planar branching is more like, think of it in an XY plane. So okay. the branches are appearing like that. Oh, and sometimes okay. you have branching, branches coming out left, right, front, yeah, back, yeah. all over the place. It's more like a 3D structure. I mean, obviously everything's 3D, but on a screen. So this would be, uh, yeah, planar. Thanks for that. This is a great zoom on the... Um, and I'm going to pass it off to Derek. Thank you so much. Are you good there? Then? Okay. Yep. We're starting a watch change yeah. for those Thanks, listening. Thanks, everyone. This is Bill Thanks, Bill. Bill. Middle watch, dead man's watch, midnight to 4 a.m. Thank you, watch. Thank you, front row, for a great job. And the morning watch is beginning to show up. Yeah. 4 a.m. Mm -hmm. to 8 a.m. Yes, and thank you so much, everybody, on the 12 to 4 watch, because this was our last midnight Mid to 4 in the morning. Lo <laughs> lovely midnight <laughs> watch yes. for us. Uh, dead man's watch. Thank so. you. Yeah, and thank you all for... Um, thank you all the viewers for tuning in and sending us your stories and comments and questions. We love exploring with you and um, thank you for all your comments with appreciation. I'll share it with our uh, fellow watchmates. So um, we hope you can continue exploring on the final um, hours of this dive. Uh, it, is, it is expected to be t about 20 hours, but again, things might change with the weather or other circumstances, but it is expected to end around um, 4 p.m. Hawaii time, I yeah. believe. And also I would really, uh, like to thank all our scientists the shows who have constantly assisted us and helped us uh, in IDing the different organisms that we see and explaining uh, different morphologies and answering our questions yeah. and doubts. Yes. Yeah. And especially Asako because she has been con consistently available during our watches because of time differences. Uh, uh, and it has been really great learning from there. everybody there. Out in front Thank you so much. Yes. Finishing up a move. Thank you, Asako and Onshore team. Thank you. Settled in over there, Ed? Settled in enough. Uh, see if we can get a polyp zoom there for sure. Yeah. Change. Which of these buttons does that? I'm not sure. All right, let me try this one. <laughs> it's early. I'm trying to focus with the iris adjustment. <laughs> that doesn't work. That's another nodal branching. So probably a Jasonisis. Let's do a little rack We've focus been, uh, just for yucks. I think the only sample we took. I can jump off of SPL here. Yeah, me too. Coming out for watch change. Pull wide, pull push. Yep. Okay. Yeah. 
All cams is good. Check, 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 check. QC 135, 6, 7, 8, 9, 1, 2, CC1, CC2, Rock 1A. Set 1, 2, 3, check. Recorder 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. One zero, salvos are good. Uh, environmental. Yeah, seems fine. Water temperature is good. Twenty-four degrees. It's comfy. One-hour timer. What are you thinking, Derek? Still 315? Or are we going to turn left sometime soon? It's not NASCAR. Okay. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Hey. What's up, Doc? Good morning. Uh, Aloha, just, uh, Kapaniaka. Yeah, so it seems like this is going to be our last watch. Because uh, I think we're going to be done with the dive around midday, so that's it. Um, so, Nav, I heard that we're going to be uh, moving south in a bit. Oh, never mind. I think they're tucking the bridge. Yeah, okay. I think it just hit me now that I've sat down that this is our last watch. Yeah.
Okay, it looks like everyone's connected and settled in, but Mike, did you want to figure out what the plan is first? Yeah, I just, um, Derek, are we going to be able to move to waypoint seven? Uh, right now we're trying. Yeah. And we're, we'll just see how the ship, if it can move laterally like that. Wait okay. and see. Yeah, sounds good. Um, I figured we might as well give it a shot, and then if it doesn't work, we could just step kind of back up. We could just stay on this um, sort of bearing and back up the slope. Yeah, whatever uh, you think. We, it doesn't seem like um, they were able to follow the waypoints the last few di uh, watches, so if we're not able to, um, yeah, we'll just explore what we can. That being said, I noticed the current has totally swung around and is much more in alignment with the wind right now. Oh, okay. So that's a good thing. Yeah. Um, so let's try it first and see how it goes. Okay, yeah, sounds good. Let me know. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah, so just so our viewers know, we're, um, we're diving on, what are we diving on? This is the Gardner Pinnacles. Um, Malia, how do we pronounce um, this the Hawaiian name for that? Yeah, so um, one of the Hawaiian names for the Gardner Pinnacles is Onu Nui. Onu Nui. That's a bigger one. Nui meaning bigger. And Onuiki, which is a smaller point that's um, above the surface of the ocean. Okay, cool. Oh. Yeah. Um, and... We had a we had a plan where we were gonna kind of do like a um, like a big of a square shape uh, as we went up one of the slopes up to a ridge and then down the ridge, um, but the the current and the winds are a little little high, so uh, keeping the ship we have to kind of keep the ship in the in a, the same orientation. So it, they kind of just went up the slope instead, which is totally fine. Um, so we're going to see how we do getting the ship to move in a different direction. Um, but we'll, we'll see how that goes in a little bit. Uh, Okeanos Explorer dived here, I think, in 2015. Um, and uh, they did a, a short dive on this ridge and saw a lot of, uh, a lot of biology. So we're, um, we're going to see what we see up here as well. That's, we're going to start moving towards that area. Um, I don't think we're going to get to where they were, but... Hopefully up along this ridge we'll see some, some good stuff. I was on that dive because I remember Gardner Pin Pinnacles. Yeah, I know they've been doing a lot of like intertidal monitoring um, on the um, those two, the two pinnacles. Okay, um, yeah. Yeah, so that's been really helpful for understanding like um, the lipids or the opihi growth in the main Hawaiian islands. So lots of good work going on in Papahanao Mokuakea. All right, well, if we're ready, for some introductions this morning for our, probably what's gonna be our final watch together. Um, oh, final watch. I know. I was thinking, you know, our usual name, role, uh, where we're from. Um, and then we've already kind of talked about this a little bit. Um, there was one day where it just kind of naturally came up in conversation where folks started sharing one of their favorite moments, but were just something that they know that they're going to remember. But I was, I'm wondering if we could each just try and share something that you know is going to be a memory um, from this journey together. And it can be something that's like big or even like a small moment that you know you're just going to remember or take home with you. But um, I know for myself, this experience has forever changed me as a person, will forever change me as an educator. And there are so many things that I'm going to take home with me, especially to my students. Um, and I know there were two moments that we actually already talked about on our watch together, but I know that I will never forget sitting in the lounge with so many others um, and watching as the USS Yorktown came mm -hmm. into view. That was just 
so amazing and definitely something that I will never forget. And I know, Malia, we've talked about um, the cultural protocol that we did, the hula that y'all performed. Um, that day and that moment was so special. And I know that all of the cultural protocol is something that I will always remember. And I'm so grateful to be, have been just part of this whole experience. Um, and um, my name is Tori Hunt. I forgot about the introduction part. <laughs> um, and I'm sailing as a science communication fellow. Um, this was my very first time aboard Exploration Vessel Nautilus. Um, this was my first time doing really anything like this. And I'm a high school science teacher in North Carolina. So I have just so much to take home to my students. Um, and I'm just so grateful to have had this opportunity to come out here and that this was my first experience sailing. So yeah, thank you all. This has been an amazing watch team. I've learned so much from all of you. We've learned so much together. And it does not have to be anything like super big for your memory, um, but just something that you know you'll take with you. Malia, would you like to go next? Sure. So aloha kakahiaka kako. Good morning to us all. Um, as we uh, live stream to you from Papahanao Mokuakea Marine National Monument, my name is Malia Evans. I am the Oahu Outreach and Education Coordinator on behalf of Papahanao Mokuakea. On board, I serve as a resource monitor and educator. And um, this entire expedition has been so vaivai. So vaivai meaning rich in the Hawaiian culture. Um, it's really hard to kind of pinpoint, you know, a, a specific uh, moment that I'll take with me. But I think the, the cultural protocols for me were just really powerful and were from the beginning, even before the expedition, you know, there's the, um, the sense of how you enter a space, a sacred space like Papahana Mokwakea. And so that preparation prior to entering the place, um, the protocols that are done as we leave Oahu to um, enter Papahana Mokuakea, the protocols that are done when we enter the space, um, the chants that we do before the dives, and as we return the ROV back up to the ship. Um, all of these were just kind of confirmations of the, the need for protocol and the need for um, Kanaka O'ivi, the people, the indigenous people of Hawaii, to be an integral part of expeditions. Um, the, it brings a richness, it brings a vibrancy, it brings an intention, um, it brings respect. Uh, and these are really important facets of, um, of research and of, of, of knowledge systems in indigenous spaces. And so um, I am just so privileged and um, to be able to be a part of a team, you know, of people who, who intentionally um, created the space for us to properly enter um, mm -hmm. Papahana Mokuakea. And so, um, yeah, it's just, it's just been so amazing. Like I sometimes, it takes a while, I think, to reflect yeah. on, on the depth of experiences that we've had. And I think over the next couple of weeks, there'll, there'll be moments when we'll, we'll have like a light bulb and we're like, oh, okay, I get it now. Mm -hmm. You know, and so those moments are so amazing because they really are life transformative. Mm -hmm. And I, I feel like that's what happened here on board the Nautilus. Like it was life transforming for many of us. Mm -hmm. And um, the protocol was a huge part of that. Yeah. I agree. Thank you, Malia. All of that was so powerful and so beautifully said. You've added mm -hmm. so much to our watch, and we have so many viewers that just uh, thank you and are always so grateful to hear your voice. Mahalo. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. All right. Mike, you ready? Yeah, good morning, everyone. Uh, Mike Brennan. I'm a maritime archaeologist with SEARCH uh, based out of Jacksonville, Florida. Um, I'm the co-lead scientist for this expedition and watch leader for this watch, four to eight. Um, and yeah, I mean, I think that our dives uh, to Akagi in particular uh, were amazing because uh, that that shipwreck had never been seen before. Uh, but to return to Yorktown 
uh, 25 years later was also really special. Um, I also wanted to just acknowledge that, you know, it, we have these vehicles down often and, and streaming live, which is uh, an amazing thing. But but sometimes it's it's hard to remember because because the blue water lo looks all the same. The the three aircraft carriers were the deepest dives that Nautilus has ever done. Um, until a couple of years ago, we didn't even have the vehicles that could do that. Um, so Kaga, which is the deepest, was almost 18,000 feet uh, deep, which is over three miles. Um, and so it's just like the the amount of team effort um, and ability and engineering and uh, a little luck when it came, comes to weather um, was just an amazing kind of confluence of uh, expertise and uh, you know, and, and timing that, that really made this work. And uh, being able to, to be on all three wrecks, um, three dives in a row, and, and document what we did and, and see what we saw um, was really uh, incredible. And it was, it was the objective, one of the objectives of the expedition, but we all knew that it was kind of, you know, weather dependent and uh, a lot of things could go wrong. And so the fact that we made all three happen was, was really amazing. And thanks to um, the entire team on board, as well as a whole bunch of people on shore that uh, participated and were able to make that happen. Mm. Hannah? Hi, I'm Hannah Parody. I am part of the science and, da science and data team as a geologist, and I'm a grad student at California State University, Long Beach. And I've been thinking about what will probably always stick with me and I, have, I think I'm going to have to say whenever the I'm hearing like people talk about like the cultural importance of, of wherever they're from. Because mm -hmm. there's so many people from different places on the ship. And being able to hear their stories and whether it's the Lumbee tribe yeah. or it's Hawaiian or it's Palauan. It's so cool to meet different people from different places. Mm -hmm. And I've just been exposed and changed in such a positive way from hearing all of y'all's stories. So, because it's so easy for me to have such a science brain. And then I've just really felt so grateful to hear y'all's conversations and just listen to what you guys have to say. Oh, I appreciate that, Hannah. And I want to say to you, ask like, amazing questions like the day that we were sitting here and you pulled up like the Lumbee tribe website and were just asking me just questions just finding stuff and you know just learning like that was amazing and I appreciate that and thank you I've learned so much geology from you and I know that a lot of our viewers have too Aww. thank you yeah no so thankful to everybody on the ship everybody has been just so kind and nice and welcoming and yeah, I can't believe this is the last one. Oh my god. I know. Sad. Yeah. All right, Sebastian. Sebastian. Hi, everyone. I am Sebastian Martinez. Um, I am a data logger here aboard the Nautilus and also an undergraduate researcher at University of Hawaii at Manila. Um, probably the most thing I'm grateful for uh, being on the ship so far is just really being challenged as a very intersexual, intersectional individual. Um, I'm from a background that doesn't have too much um, cultural influence and I think that has been very important learning that here on the Nautilus and, and, and integrating that into my scientific process and how I conduct science in the future. That's been incredibly influential and also learning how to operate on a ship as a more full-fledged scientist opposed to as a basic student which is also something I'm very appreciative of. Um, overall, I think I'm gaining just a huge amount of experience being here on Nautilus, both culturally, mentally, and scientifically. Nice, Sebastian. Thank you. I know that we have learned so much from you. Um, before we move to the front row, have we seen any coral or sponges that you want to like mention? Um, 
It's been pretty homogenous so far. Lots of bamboo corals, a couple chrysogorgias here and there, and a couple black corals here and there. But nothing super large or noticeable that we haven't seen before, or that it would be particularly stand out so far. Awesome. Well, thank you. Yeah, of course. All right. Front row, Derek, are you ready for an introduction? Uh, sure. Yeah, good morning or good afternoon, depending on where you are. Um, my name is Derek Sowers. I work for the Ocean Exploration Trust as a mapping manager and um, the navigator on this watch um, from Durham, New Hampshire. And uh, I think for me, what really one thing that really stands out is uh, I've always had a fascination with this marine protected area, the, the biggest one in the United States, um, Papahana, Mokuakea, and I've always wanted to come here and be part of a mission to this region to better understand it. Um, and yeah, just the overall opportunity to come out here, this super special place, um, and, to, and to understand from our native Hawaiian colleagues, the cultural importance of this has been huge learning opportunity, um, amazing experience, and uh, a lot of fun. Uh, so just super privileged to come out here and um, Particularly important to me was uh, seeing some of the diversity of habitats out here, the, the deep sea corals, the sponge communities that we were able to find on some of these seamounts was just mind blowing. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, to have the chance to see that uh, for the first time was like spectacular. Um, that was a highlight for me. Nice. I just wanted to tell you, we have some viewers that are uh, mentioning that you're such a great navigator, so you've got some fans. Oh, thanks. In the chat. <laughs> yes. Appreciate that. Yeah, awesome. Thank you. That wasn't me. <laughs> <laughs> I've never done that. All right, maybe once. Jake, how about you? Yeah, my name is Jake Bonney. I am piloting ROV Hercules. Um, and I'd have to kind of follow up with Derek's um, sentiment and agree with him there that coming to this monument is pretty amazing. You never know what you're going to see with each dive. It seems like we always have something else to discover in such a uh, big and culturally, culturally significant place. And it's my, it's actually, it's my third time coming out here and it's definitely one of my favorite places to explore. Mm. Um, and uh, continuing to learn about the significance of these discoveries is uh, amazing. So, yeah. Nice, thank you. And Sebastian, are we looking at an eel? Yes, this is a snapabrank eel, um, also known as a cutthroat eel. Cutthroat eel. Is it puhi? Puhi, yeah. Yes. So that's not the halosaur? No, the halosaurs okay. are a lot skinnier. Okay, got it. I didn't say hadrosaur that time. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Nice. This is a beautiful poofy. I didn't um, look. Uh, did you notice any parasites on this one? I didn't see any. I didn't see any. I didn't see any scarring like some of the previous ones either. Interesting. Tito, are you ready for an introduction? Uh, sure. Uh, good morning. Uh, Tito Colacious, typically expedition leader and chief pilot with the Jason ROV back at the Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution and uh, out here as an Adelante pilot. I got to say the things that left uh, the biggest memories with me are both the Yorktown uh, exploration of uh, being a veteran of uh, World War II era ships back in the Navy and the uh, protocols, uh, those were amazing things. I'm uh, just uh, thankful to be a part of it. Awesome, thank you, Tito. All right, Ed, how are you feeling? Uh, doing great. Uh, I'm Ed McNichol, I'm video operations manager for OET, and I'm sailing as the second video engineer on this leg. This is my third or fourth time up here on the monument. I love coming up every opportunity I get. It's, uh, I'm very grateful for the opportunity. 
and uh, I've uh, come up before with uh, the hope of uh, diving on the maritime archaeology sites and not been able to do it, so finally being able to do that despite the technical challenges. Uh, grateful for that and the team I'm with that was innovative enough to find Sorry a way to, to make bother it work. you. What is Go this right little ahead. black thing that's floating right over here in the left center? You see what I'm talking about? Left center. Right floating? below the, there it is. Right below the laser now. Oh, okay. Oh, I see it. Yeah. Jelly. Yeah. Jake's in fight, fighter mm -hmm. pilot mode. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, gone in. Just a quick one. Don't get too close. Whoa. We'll blow it out. Oh, wow. Kupa and Naha. Kupa and Naha. Looks kind of like an Atiola jellyfish, but without the blue cap to it. Coming out. Thank you so much. Pololia. Pololia. Jellyfish. Pololia. 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 Nice eye, Sebastian. What did I do? <laughs> so did I interrupted someone. Uh, I think I pretty much covered it. Although, Tori, since it's our last watch, yeah. I always, uh, find that a good opportunity to uh, kind of We've had lots of time to uh, meet and discuss and learn things about one another. Mm -hmm. And last watch is always a good opportunity to see how well we've all been listening. <laughs> so, uh, with your blessing, yeah, I propose a quick round of I don't know, where uh, I can uh, ask a question about one of your watchmates. Just mentally keep track of this. You don't okay. know. You know, no guessing. You just say, I don't know. Zero points. If you have an answer and it's right, that's one point. You're wrong, lose a point. Super quick, super fast, let's super fun. Let's do it. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> so, question one. Go ahead. Jake, do you what? have an operation thing? No. Okay. <laughs> just wanted to interrupt you for a second. <laughs> 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 I, I got it coming, I'm sure of that. <laughs> so, uh, first question is, how many siblings does Mike have? Ooh. Mm -hmm. So if you know, you know, you can jump in if you want to just opt for the I don't know and take the easy zero points. Two, two. Brothers, two. One sister. Oh, man. A twin there brother and a sister, yeah. You want to uh, double up on that, Tito, since you got it right? Well, he's uh, got a twin also. Mm -hmm. And his twin has a tattoo of what? No? Got nothing. Anybody? The family crest. Know. His uh, twin has a tattoo uh, of the... The younger brother has that. Oh, that's sorry. You're right. It's... Uh, <laughs> so, uh, how many years has Sebastian lived on Oahu? Seven. Four. Five. Seven. Five. Sebastian? Seven. <laughs> <laughs> so is this? I thought is this everyone answering? Uh, well, you can't answer about yourself. Yeah. Okay. Just yeah. Just okay. Jump in. It's, gotcha, it's gotcha, loose. Okay. It's, it's really very not loose. Cool that I don't think. Yeah. This is a <laughs> Nautilus Jeopardy with your host Ed. Yeah. <laughs> Jeopardy rules. So, uh, so Ed's been taking notes all all, all expedition. Well, no, this is uh, <laughs> just part of who I am. <laughs> uh, where did Derek's family vacation last year? Ooh. A national park, but I don't remember. Yeah, yeah. Which one. and there was something underwater Derek's, that reminded us of it. This. <laughs> there was something underwater that reminded us of it. It was geology, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. sure Sometimes was. He went hiking. They went hiking. Was it California somewhere? <laughs> it, we saw a little like slot canyon underwater. I don't remember. Oh. I don't know. How do you remember these things? Uh, I'll tell you that later. 
uh, it wasn't, uh, I, I don't know if it was specifically antelope, but it was the canyons in Arizona. Is that right, Derek? Yeah, that's right. All right. It, it was Antelope Canyon. Antelope mm -hmm. Canyon, yeah. great. Uh, all right, now somebody's already given this away, so I think we all know it. Uh, what tribe does Tori's family belong to? Lumbe. Lumbe. Yeah, Lumbe. right on. Uh, what kind of dog do I have? Is it an Aussie collie? Oh, yeah. yeah, blue healer, so we'll go with that. And uh, Rowan, right on the Tito. What was Tito's role on the expedition that discovered the Titanic? Oh, I remember this one. Uh, it was a dishwasher. No, it was uh, technically a mess attendant, I believe. Was oh, a mess attendant. Yeah. Yeah. I describe quite often as dishwasher. <laughs> All right. Oh, uh, yeah, I was going to say dishwasher. Mm -hmm. I did more dishwashing than anything else. Might and then a few cookies, but. for the uh, <laughs> nautical ones, what do you call the part of a vessel where you return your dishes and they're washed? A scullery. There you go. Oh, I did not know that one. So you would have forgotten. <laughs> he said uh, not. Any Navy would answer scullery. that one. That's scullery. Every, every scullery. Navy person has to do 90 days in the, yeah. of what they call mess cranking. And, uh, and the scullery was the worst duty. Then how many children does Miss Malia have? Five. 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 Oh, everybody <laughs> we know on that one. one. And uh, what high school did Hannah attend? Um, St. D Dominion, Dominican, yeah. Dominican, Dominican, Dominican. 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 No, that, that probably does uh, help your marriage quite a bit. It does. <laughs> it's, you know, so I remember that, you know, next Thursday at 4 p.m. she has a hair appointment, and then when she comes home, I tell her how great her hair looks. Yep. And one of these days, her hairdresser is going to be sick, and I'm going to get caught. <laughs> <laughs> your hair looks great. Well, nothing happened. <laughs> uh, well... Must but have been a good student because yeah. I zone off like it was. It's about to be recess. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great thing. at the clock. That's a great thing for a Herc pilot to do. Yeah. But I also have ADHD, which is like a compliment up here. Yeah. Yeah. Just yeah. A million things. It's it's great because we see his head bouncing the entire watch from back here. Yeah. If I was sitting over there, I'd throw a syringe full of Thorazine into his leg. <laughs> Thorazine. I was thinking ratchet straps. Sometimes the whole floor is shaking. <laughs> That's why the camera shakes on the ROV. It's from Jake. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was fun. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Ed. Thanks, well, thanks that was fun. Really fun. Who's the winner? Uh, how, how, we're all winners. We're all um, winners. Is, that does not look like a shrimp. Is that a worm? Yeah, I'll get Where? Participation uh, top left. <laughs> Sober. Oh, I see it barely. I'm not sure. I can't tell from this far. I think it is a worm or polychaete. Polyp. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah, I think it is. I kind of hope it's four. a polychaete. Right here. That's oh. the nice thing about the the arrows. You can actually yeah, nice use move of the it arrow. with the. Uh, are our viewers still able to see the telestrator? Uh, they are not, but we'll put it out there. There we nice. go. Now they can. Thank you. Yeah. Where did the thing go? Oh, there it is. I could see the parapoda a little bit when it was behind the darker part of the rock. It definitely looked like a polychaete. Oh, now it's down, so it's easier to image. What is parapoda? Are those oh, the, like... Not for long. No. Parapoda are the Probably little the, um, uh, paddle like appendages on their sides. Yeah, it's polychaete, yeah? Yep, uh, polychaete. Okay. 